Hey, good evening, Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. <clears throat> I'd also like to make a few comments about the, the sidewalks. Um, I've been involved with that subject uh, about as long as most anybody in town that doesn't live at the beach. Uh, started with the Faith Spofford Thorndike study uh, back uh, started in 2002. Uh, I endorsed their findings, which did call for replacement of the sidewalks, or replacement of, of Ocean Boulevard and upgrading. Um, I worked with the Senator Stiles. She carries, as usual, most of the weight, but I worked with her on uh, getting this on the 10-year plan. And uh, a couple of years ago, or maybe not that long ago, uh, not too long before he left, I, I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the previous commissioner, Commissioner Clement. And he, just like the present commissioner, um, was very, very helpful in trying to reach as much accommodation as they possibly could on this issue. Uh, I asked him a number of sp specific questions regarding the sidewalks and the road down there and the rebuild, and we, we kind of went through it step by step. Yes, they were willing to rebuild the whole thing <clears throat> if it's on the 10-year plan. Yes, they were willing to consider as part of that design, <clears throat> excuse me, a sloped sidewalk rather than a curbed sidewalk, which might invite personal injury and so forth. Uh, they were uh, more than uh, willing to turn it over, the ownership over to the town. Uh, their uh, highways, uh, just like the crosswalks that uh, the senator mentioned, there are no sidewalks on state highways, which is why their policy is there. I think Ocean Boulevard is the one exception. There might be one or two other very small sections of state highways that have a sidewalk on them, but nowhere else do they uh, maintain them. So they're trying to keep their policy uniform throughout the state so they can do the same thing in all places. Uh, they are, however, I found this with the previous commissioner, and I have no reason to uh, think anything um, uh, different would uh, come about with the current commissioner uh, on the uh, arrangements for the, the uh, plowing and so forth. I had a similar conversation with Commissioner Clement uh, regarding that. I, I think that if, if, if we look at the, con the negotiation that's coming up on this, um, we had a town manager, several town managers ago, who always used to say uh, the best negotiation is when both parties come out of it equally unhappy. That means they each have to give up a little bit of something. Yep. And, I, and I think that's true in this one, too. Um, what is the state giving up? They're giving up a pretty valuable piece of property, all that sidewalk. They're willing to give up as much as 15 feet wide, perhaps. Uh, all the way down there that would come over to the town. The town, in turn, would have to uh, maintain, well, they'd have to plow it. Maintenance, you know, look at Route 1 from uh, left, from High Street North uh, that was put in uh, back when I was a selectman. It was in like 99, I think it was finally put in. Uh, and we're just now starting to see some of the wear and tear. But the town hasn't had to spend much money on maintenance of Route 1 because it was a brand new road. I think you'll see the same thing down there. There's not going to be a lot of out-of-pocket cost other than uh, the cost of a snowplow. I know that the town manager has, has uh, referenced the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, that you have to clear ways from the stores out to the, to the right-of-way. And uh, I don't know how many... Uh, stores are actually open down there. Perhaps some of the uh, merchants down there that are there all winter long. I try not to go down there too much in the winter. It's uh, I don't have any business down there during the winter. But I think maybe uh, Bob Preston or Tom McGuirk could uh, cite the number of, of uh, places down there. And if you passed an ordinance that required them to clear that out to the, to the right of way, that would take care of a good bit of it. Uh, but I think that what would the, the thing that you would gain from this is a tremendous increase in visitors that come here and say, gee, this is now, this is the last piece of, the, of all of this puzzle they've been putting together over the last 10, 15 years, and it will be a greater place for them, and I think we will see a, a result, uh, a, an increase in commerce, an increase in tourists, an increase in income uh, for the businesses that uh, uh, pay the tax base in this town and so forth. So I, I think that... Um, if, if you would approach this on the positive side, yes, there is an agreement in there, but the agreement was done in 1933, I believe it is. Is that correct? 33? That's, that's older than I am. That's old. So you, you sure you weren't there? Yeah, I, well, I heard about it the next day. So. <laughs> no, uh, but, 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 you know, 
Old agreements like that must grow with the times. At that time, in 1933, there were still Model A's and even maybe some Model T's on the road. Um, the traffic volume was different. Hey, Chairman, I can't hear. Yeah, can we, can we give him some respect and, and allow him to hear him to speak? Uh, there, there were some pretty old cars on the road then and the traffic was lighter. The, the beach was a totally different place. Now it has grown and perhaps in the best interest of the people who come here to our town, in the best interest of the businesses here in town, maybe it's the appropriate time to think about renegotiating this contract in a positive way so that both parties, instead of coming out equally unhappy, they come out equally happy. So I hope that you will vote in favor of, uh, of a, a good agreement with the, with the state. And uh, as with Senator Stiles, is anything I can uh, do to assist on this um, as a go-between, as a messenger, as a uh, whatever, uh, dealing with the folks up in Concord, I'd be more than happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.